Hi everyone, this is Konzel here and have for you guys the Kave Math Guide 1 where I'll go through his kit. Now I do realize that this uh, Math Guide for Kave is considered a little late, you know, seeing as we are already into the patch uh, 3.6. So I'll try to go fast on him because I think most people are more or less aware of his kit by now. But I just wanted to do a bit more uh, detailed analysis on his kit before we move on to the uh, actual math of the comms and stuff. Okay, so bear with me. Uh, I'll go fast for his uh, kit per se. His kit is also pretty straightforward to be honest. So stats wise, his HP is actually pretty high, which I have no idea why. He has no HP skilling. He has heal, so his healing is also based on EM, so he doesn't need a high HP. But regardless, he has his HP is only slightly lower than Kirara's, by the way, who is like a HP skilling character, right? With her heals. Sorry, not heals. Uh, what I'm talking about, which her with her uh, kit. And then you have base attack, defense, uh, and her main stat is EM. And I'll talk more about this later. Okay. Mew Flower looks pretty decent on him, but we will talk more about that in the detailed math guide later. And in future math guides. So those are his stats. How do I talk about his stats, right? We we'll quickly talk about his talents, passives, constellations, kit summary, weapons, artifacts, copies, uh, comps, and what's else, what else is coming for copy. Yeah. So, talents wise. You have normal attack talent here and if you're focusing on bloom damage and just using normal attack as a driver there's no need to level up this talent maybe just to six if you can save the resources in future math guides i'll explore in detail whether it may be worth going crit or crit hybrid on him if it's worth it then yeah there is a use case for this any talent but otherwise that's it and this is his elemental skill like i guess it's very very straightforward because there's only one figure here which is the skill damage and then it'll go down six seconds so effectively, Kaveh scans 5 meter around him. The Dendro Core Rupture Range, you think of it this way. If you need a reference in game of how, how big the AoE is, right? Think of him as the Dendro Core exploding. That's the range. Now he does Dendro damage via this method, and he immediately explodes all the Dendro Cores in range. So in a sense, this is similar to Nilos, but it's less staggered because it's activated every 6 seconds. So you may have more cores being wasted due to the redemption limit of 2 per enemy. So it's always there, right? The, the, the cores may be, gener you may be generating more than 2 cores. And because they don't explode immediately like Nilos, they only explode every few seconds based on Kave using his E or, and his Q, the uh, activation of his Q anyway. So I do foresee more cores being wasted because of this. So basically, a budget Nilo. Right? So not as ideal as Nilo, but somewhat similar to what Nilo is doing. Now, ICD wise, there's no ICD on E, but since E is one hit with set seconds cooldown, it's not much of a difference really, unless you're using Sacrificial, but you wouldn't want you to spam E with the Sacrificial because you also need to spam, you need to spawn the cost first. That's number one. Number two is it's kind of a waste to use Sacrificial on a low cooldown E, right? It's only six seconds. Uh, energy generation wise is not too bad. It will generate two general particles on six second cooldown. So if you use it every time it's up, it's actually pretty decent uh, particle generation. Let's talk about his skill next because his skill is also pretty straightforward. It's also one hit with a skill damage. Uh, there's a there's a twelve second duration to it, and during these twelve seconds, you also get a dendro uh, core burst damage bonus. So this is kind of like Nilo, right? But the percentage obviously is a lot smaller. So his Q really does the same as his E. Even the AoE is the same. It's also 5 meters around him. Also does then one, one hit of a Dendro damage. He also immediately explodes uh, Dendro cores in range. However, his Q has additional features. Okay. So first off, it provides Kaveh with Dendro infusion and increased AoE on his NACAPA that cannot be overridden. So this side is pretty straightforward, right? So effectively, effectively, this is what allows him to be a driver, dendro driver. Secondly, he, he also provides con dendro core burst damage bonus to all the cores generated by the team, not just himself. He also increases, uh, this skill also increases the resistance to interaction for Kave in those 12 seconds. So basically a dendro driver role. I don't like Nilo's damage bonus, but you gotta remember Nilo is up to 400%. Whereas uh, Kaveh is only 46.7 to 55%, which is why I keep saying that he's a budget Nilo. And the increased increase resistance to interaction is also not strong. 
It's basically the same as Sinos. So if you remember Sinos, <laughs> Sinos uh, increase, I have to do it with a double code. Okay, imagine you can see me doing the double code. Increase resistance to interaction. Yeah, right. Maybe only to healer trail arrows or hits. But not against lava chairs for sure. And I think even meter chairs or me watchers can break him. Yeah, so you have that point of reference, okay? Now, ICD wise, Q does apply to you with no ICD. Uh, but you know, with the Q cooldown duration and it being only one hit, it's pretty much it. Infuse AACA applies when you with standard ICD, which is to be expected, you know, because it's normal attacks. You gotta have standard ICD. Or worse, but at least it's standard ICD. Now, whether we go full DPS on him, full EM, or possibly hybrid, I'll talk more about it later and also we'll explore in detail in the future math guides. So these are his talents, uh, active talents anyway, the normal attack talent, the E and the Q. So like I said, he's actually very, very straightforward. In terms of understanding his kit, optimizing him, in terms, especially in terms of comm, and who does trigger, etc. That is where the complexity comes in for Kaveh. But before we go there, let's talk about the passive. So A1 passive, very, very straightforward. When damaged by a dendro core, including Virgin and Hyper Bloom, his Kaveh, Kaveh will regain HP equal to 300% of his EM. And be triggered every 0 0.5 seconds. So basically, he's a self-reliant driver in Bloom related comms because he doesn't need heals. I mean, obviously, it's still nice to have a healer to heal other characters while they're setting up their rotations. If somehow there happen to be some self-damage, especially if you're using him with Nilo. But... Yeah, I mean this this really helps. This does help for you to not have to get HP. But the other thing is also that he will immediately explode all, all the dendro cores in range every few seconds, right? So when he does this, what happens is that uh in a scenario that you really do generate a lot of cores with high EM, high HP, etc., like with Nilo, this may or may not be enough. It's not I cannot hundred percent say that this will be enough, you know. But it's still nice to have this, this self heal. Hmm? Not too bad, especially for a dendro driver. So it's a decent passive. Now, if a passive during his Q, remember your NACAPA hit opponents, his EM will increase by 25, trigger once every 0 0.1 seconds, max 4 stats. So basically, you get 100 EM from his A4 passive through your Q, NA, or CA, or PA. It's an additional EM bonus, but if you really, really think about it, right, it's really more for the mixed triggers in a row of Bloom comps. Because if you talk about Hydro triggers, then, you know, it's EM. No matter how high it's EM is, it's useless. And mixed triggers in are unfortunately less ideal than Hydro triggers to begin with. If we are talking about him together with Nilo. Or even him in a uh, Bloom comp without Nilo. Pure Bloom comp, no Hyper Bloom, no Virgin. And I'll talk about Hyper Bloom and Virgin later. So I think it's really too bad that he has no EM skilling his standard damage or like EM skilling to get him some damage models etc etc because that would have made him a lot more versatile because right now he's in a kind of, in of a walk awkward situation where his essential stack gives him EM his A4 passive gives him EM but to utilize his EM you have to go for a less than ideal bloom com scenario where you go for mid trigger instead of hydro triggers because hydro triggers always gives you more calls there's more core damage for sure. These triggers, you because the, 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 the trigger are being dis distributed across the com, right? And you will have some of the characters that will not have high EM, unless you build high EM all four characters. But some characters are just not meant to build high EM. Like, you know, Sing Chiu and Yelan. Do you really want to go half full EM on them? Doesn't feel good. It's a waste of their high talent multipliers. Okay? So, yeah, like I said, if, if Hoyoverse really wanted to make him good, right, they should have included some form of EM skilling in his talent damage. And that would make him a lot more versatile. Okay, so next, uh, I really, really like this passive because uh, it's a new one for Furnishings. And it covers the other end of the spectrum, the other half of the spectrum. So with Yomiya plus Kave, if you have both of them, right, you are pretty much able to always refund all your materials for all, or rather, sorry, I should say all materials, refund a portion of the materials for all your furnishings. So that's very nice. I mean, this alone makes me want to pull for him. Just a C0 copy of him. <laughs> okay, so that's the passives. Let's talk about constellations. So first constellation is more mitigation. 
right? It helps reduce the damage you take and increases the income healing bonus. So it's nice, but not crucial. I guess this helps more in terms of like uh, maybe even tanking some additional hits from the enemies instead of just the self core damage. But regardless, uh, that's not that great. I mean, if you are doing him in a Hydro Trigger comp, more or less you will have a healer because most of the healers are the ideal Bloom DPS per se. Like Barbara, Kokomi, and Nilo if you have key. So, mm, doesn't feel great to uh, go for. I mean, this 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 is it's just nice to have. Yeah, let's put it this way. It's nice to have. It's not important. It's not game-changing. It helps, but it's not game changing. Now, C2, Carve's normal attack speed increases by 15% during Painted Dome. So, faster hits, more cores. But realistic is, realistically speaking, because it's Claymore user, Claymore have the F hit lag, right? It may just be one to two more application, elemental applications instances in your entire queue. So I guess it's nice. Again, a nice to have, but it's not that impactful. It's not super OP per se. Unless you build his, nah, even if you build his talent damage, still not OP, right? It's not bad for a four star, but it's not like super great. C3 increases the level of his Q, and Q is like a better version of his E, right? So no surprise here. But I'll say the impact is very bad because the Q damage bonus doesn't skill with EM. So your additional 9% from the uh, Dendro Core Burst damage, right? Like 46.7 to go into 55%, which is actually more like additional 8%. It only translates to about 200 additional damage each core. So it's pretty much a worthless C3. <laughs> and C4, Dendro Core created from Bloom Reactions Cave Triggers will deal 60% more damage when they burst. Oh, that sounds good, right? It effectively doubles the damage bonus he grants from his Q. It's slightly more than double if you look at level 12, right? Because you're at C4, you, I should look at level 12. So it's 55% and you get another 60%. So slightly more than double. But it's only for Kave Triggers. And this is actually very restrictive, unlike his Q. Because his Q applies to all the calls that are created, Pedro calls that are created by your team. If you remember my Nilo series and even the Nikai Kirara. Nilo math guy, right? I always talk about 2D, 2H with Hydro Triggers. Because that's the, that's actually the better, more consistent approach that gives you more cores and always guarantee 100% Hydro Trigger once you set up your rotation correctly in terms of uh, setting up Dendro Aura and interweaving your Dendro and Hydro application. The problem with his C4 is that it only works for Kave Dendro Triggers. And the safer, safer approach to, to really utilize this C4 is to obviously do 1D3H meets triggers. Because there's no way you can guarantee. The thing about uh the, the 1D3H scenario here, right? Because you're doing on fuel application, there may be instances where you apply your next dendro before the next hydro trigger or application happens. It is definitely possible, especially for the case of your item and uh Nahida. But I'll say this though, uh, I I may not have written it here, but I'll say this. He does have a higher chance of getting more dendro cores, even if it's mixed triggers, because sorry, dendro triggers, because his E application rate is lower. Or rather, outside of his NA, his other sources of uh application is definitely lower than El Hitem and Nahida. But it still doesn't feel great. You know, you're still getting missed triggers. You still lose out on total number of calls. And on top of that, some of your calls, because it's missed, right? It's gonna be triggered by characters with like low EM, like Xinchu or Yelan. So yeah, I will only recommend this C4 if you intend to do 1D 3H with mixed triggers. Otherwise, this constriction is not required. And let me put things into perspective, okay? This gives you 60%, right? I do A4 grants you 100% increase as long as you get to that HP level. And you can easily get this 100% increase from Baizu's A4 once you put him and you create a 2D 2H scenario team. And then you get 80 EM from Dendro Essence because it's Bloom Comp, it's not Hyper Bloom or Virgin. And then you also are able to set up your more consistent 100% Hydro Triggers with more cores. Because it's half, remember? Hydro Trigger is always half. Half consumption. And this can be opting with a Sizu Baitu, whereas uh, you know you need Silver Cave for this. 
Uh, depending on how your pools go, obviously sometimes you may get C4 Cafe before C0 Baidu. It's possible, I can't rule it out. But generally speaking, you would get a C0 Baidu before a C4 Cafe, assuming you are, you start with uh, not having I, both of them at the same time. Especially given the, the current banner where they are coming together in the same banner. So, yep. And also, the other thing is that this 60% also gets a diminishing return if Nilo is on the top. Because Nilo gives you up to 400%, right? So, 60% versus when you already have 400%, that 60% has quite a bit diminishing return. So, I got, it, it's a bit brutal for me to say this, it's a bit harsh for me to say this, but this constitution is just useless. Because it's basically a trap that makes you go for a less ideal setup without giving you like very significant gains. There's no significant gains, to be honest, especially if you're using with Nilo. Yeah, so it's a trap. I'd rather use a C0 Kave with a C0 by 2 That gives me uh 46.7% from Kave's Q, 100% from uh, by 2's A4, and then 400% from Nilo. That will give me better results. Not to mention I have two Hydro Triggers with high, with high, 100% 100% Hydro Triggers with high EM as well. See, see where I'm going with this? Yeah, it's not great. C5 is pretty bad, pretty useless as well. I can't decide whether C4 is worse or C5 is worse. Uh, I think C4 is worse. Because if you go full Hydro Trigger, then C4 is absolutely useless, right? And even if you go DPS build on him, it's still not that impactful in your entire rotation. Because it's just increasing the E damage. It's not like a super high E damage, that's number one. Number two, uh, yeah, you do get to use it more, but it's, it's not that great, seriously. Like, C5 has always been the worst. C3 usually has slightly better effect than C5. Or value. Alright, let's talk about C6. When Kaveh's NACAPA his opponents during his queue, they will unleash a Pyridaza slight on the opponent's position, dealing 61.8% of Kaveh's attack as AoE dendro damage and causing all costs to burst again. Now, this effect can be triggered once every 3 seconds. So basically, if I, I see some pretty high value for this constellation, if it's used without Nilo. But, but, but it still helps with Nilo too. Okay? So effectively, it's a 1U uh, application and elevating your Dendro Core uh, explosion every 3 seconds. Oh, it also has very nice AoE. It has, it has the same AoE. Uh, or rather, I should say, effect. AOE range S is E and Q, but centered upon the opponent's position. So, not bad, not bad. Although centered upon the opponent's position can mean that you still are not able to hit some opponents, but uh, on the whole, it's still very decent AOE. So it's very nice. And it's also important for you to utilize your uh, C4 effect in a 1D3H mistrigger comp, right? Because you get to apply more, you get to do more. But is it worth all the not so good constellations, right? I already said C3 is user, C4 user, C5 user, C1 is good to have, C2 is also good to have, but now both C1 and C2 are not impactful. So that brings me to the constellation con con constellations conclusion. C1, C2, just nice to have. C4 is a trap. C6 is good, but it's only better utilized in 1D, 3H mistrigger comps, which in the first place is less ideal because it comes with lesser cost in returns and also some. Uh, low EM costs or uh, low EM uh, triggers. So yeah, I really wouldn't bother pulling Cave constellations to be honest with you guys, unless you already intend to get more by two constellations. But if you saw my by two map series, you also don't really need by two constellations. So I say this banner is actually a good time to save up Rainbow Gems. If you really want either Cave or by two, just get both of them at C zero. It's good enough to start C zero. Don't go beyond C zero. Okay, if you're a spender. Or be it a minimum or low spender or high spender or whatever the case is, don't go beyond C0 for Pi2 and Kabe. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about kit summary. So let me bring everything in together. Okay. He's a budget Nilo that can be used with Nilo rather than replacing Nilo. I mean you can replace Nilo, but it's really not ideal. Now I know that he does not have the same restriction that uh Nilo has, which somehow people are so happy about. But if you have really used Nilo, and when I say really use, I'm not talking about people who use the who play her in trial and then tell me that she's bad. Okay. And you 
where if you mean really use Nilo, it means that you have Nilo, you optimize her correctly, you build her in the right team. I can tell you, you will feel that that restriction does not matter at all. You will not care about it at all. Why? Because I'll take that restriction any time for that 400% damage increase and the immediate core explosions that actually staggered based on application. So what this means is that a Nilo Bloom Com, you don't really need to worry about the reaction uh, limit of uh, 2 per enemy. enemy. I mean, yeah, do you sometimes hit it, but it, it's very, very staggered. Okay, it's really based on your application as it happens. Whereas for Kave, it's, there's a very long duration between the immediate core explosion. Now, I'm talking about a scenario where it's a uh, Kave without Nilo. If Kave has Nilo, you do not have this issue. Because Nilo, Nilo Bloom calls were already, the multiple calls were already explode before that. There's no chance for, for Kave to uh, trigger as activate or activate the cause to explode. They will have exploded. They will have exploded before that. The bad side. Okay. So yeah, I mean, come on. Do I really need to go and explain how OP Nilo is? I shouldn't have to, right? So if you really think about it, right? Kave can also be using Hyper Bloom or Virgin Comps. Definitely, for sure. It's not optimal in terms of how his kit is designed. In terms of like uh, being able to you fully utilize his kit. But not having that restriction does help in terms of like uh, maybe using animal for pools. If you want to utilize this kit, to improve the, the clearing efficiency. But that's provided you have no Nilo. And the settings that Nilo, even with restriction, will still do significantly higher damage. So, yeah. Oh wait, sorry, I think the order is split. No wonder it felt a little weird for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is how it looks should look like, yeah? So I when I talk about Animo, it's still in a Bloom Comp scenario. But if you think about Hyper Blue and Virgin, you if you only look at Dendro application, of course it can be used in Hyper Bloom, Virgin, and Grass Pet, etc. Just not as optimal because you don't use some parts of his kit, right? Uh how he has the auto activation, the dendro core burst damage bonus, etc. But that being said, he has good AoE. He has okay application. So it's not too bad to use him. It's just that you have to use him as a dendro driver. So basically, any existing Hyper Bloom or Virgil comes where you have a dendro driver, you can use Kave. No issues at all. In fact, he offers good AoE. It's just, you know, it doesn't feel good. Personally, personally, for me personally, I don't feel good where I'm not utilizing the character to its full potential. That's just me. If you if you want if you are looking for someone, a dendro driver with a good AOE, right? He fits the bill. Perfectly. Okay. So now for me personally, I would like to use him with Nilo. I'll probably slot in a Baitu for companionship SP farming. Uh wait, sorry, I think this is wrong. I should use Kokomi here, not Sijo because remember we are doing hydro triggers into Yelan while having high uh, or good talent damage because depending on how you build them your yeah, yeah, costs are still going to be low EM costs so that feels bad yeah I mean probably I'll try to try and find a permutation where with team buffs EM maybe we can do some decent damage with uh, even with Yelan uh, prots or uh, Sinchu prots no matter what, it's still going to be lower damage than, say, a uh, full on core. But if your Ye Lan or your Sinju are very, very, very well built, right? That's worth considering. You sacrifice your core damage for some talent damage, basically. For talent damage, not some talent damage. Yeah, but it's, this is probably going to come that I'll look into for uh, the next math guide. But I'll definitely talk about more options than just this, yeah? I'll talk about all the different flats options when it comes to Math Guide 2. Okay, I wanted this to be fast, but I ended up talking a lot too. <laughs> okay, weapons and artifacts. For Kave as a Dendro Trigger, the last F2P weapon, Milk Flower, is pretty good for him, aesthetically and both the uh, performance. Sacrificial is okay, it just doesn't feel good for a 6 second cooldown E. Aqua Marine is better than Sacrificial, in my opinion, also better than Milk Flower for uh, Hybrid. Because Aqua Marine actually gives you a lot of attack. And the overall EM is only slightly lower than a Mute Flower. Like 40 EM lesser. But in return, you get a lot more attack. Especially if full EM on your Kave. 
Uh, Rain Slasher is probably decent in 1D3H. Uh, but again, you know, it's mid trigger, so it's not all the time that you get Rain Slasher's uh, damage bonus. And if you go full yen on it, then, you know, the damage bonus isn't really that crucial per se. Now, for the 5 star weapons, I have to do the 2 math to see if it's worth going crit DPS or hybrid on him first. But for pure hydro triggers, right, I'll say that you can even use Favonius if the team requires more energy. Or you could go crit DPS slash hybrid, but definitely not full EM for hydro triggers because uh, that full EM is just going to be very underutilized. Okay? Now, artifacts wise, for dendro triggers, I'll say obviously 4 FPL, purpose of Paradise Lost. Uh, 2 DM, 2 FPL, or 2 e uh, 80 EM, any of the 80 EM. May be better for creative pass or hybrid, and obviously for DM is a solo dendro or even hydro triggers. When it's hydro triggers, right, you have two dendro, char dendro character, so just one of them uses for DM, the other one uses whatever is more ideal per se. So like if you are pairing him with uh, Baizu, Kave with Baizu, Kave can be the four DM with Baizu using something like mm, Clem. If you are so happy, you still want Clem so much, you want to use Clem so much, for sure you can do it. Or you could go for the on Baizu and try to go more DPS C on uh, Kave. Mm, doable as well. Okay, so maybe like something like 2 DM with 20% attack. Yeah, but 20% attack isn't that impactful, right? So maybe 4 DM on Kave and uh, Clam on Baizu just for the a little bit more damage from the Clam. Doable? Definitely doable. I'm not uh, restricting the options here per se. And that's for the weapons and artifacts. Let's go on to talk about Kave Combs. So I actually more or less cover it, but I'm going to just go into more detail here. Nilo Bloom Comb, you can either go 2D2H Hydro Trigger or 1D3H Mix Triggers, but I would recommend 2D2H because it's the control triggers and ensure high, ensure high EM triggers. Now, if you somehow want to use Kave Bloom Comb without Nilo, you should always go 1D3H mixed triggers. Sorry, it's not dendro, it's mixed. Since without Nilo, you kind of need Kave certification on the dendro course. So you definitely want Kave to do more. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend doing Kave Bloom Comb without Nilo if you don't have C6 Kave. Because the, the drop off versus uh, Nilo is just going to be too, too big without C6. And even, to be honest, even with C6, it's just not going to be able to compare on Nilo. I know people were like, talking to me, oh, but he doesn't have that restriction, but you know, I already addressed the restriction earlier. So, yeah. So, one thing to remember is that for 1D3H, right, the trigger ownership will almost likely be distributed across characters, so it's not as ideal. Although, Kave that may have a chance of getting more triggers than Nahida or Hayden in 1D3H because his standard application rate is lower. So it helps you in uh, getting more ownership, more triggers, but it also means lesser cost in return. So it still hurts, still not ideal. Like you could also go 1D, 1A, 2H, A being animal for pulls and buffs, yeah? So, uh, you know, without the restriction, you can have deploy an animal character there to help you with all this stuff, you know? Animal characters give you EM buff, pulling, etc. But that's what I can see, but uh, it's unlikely to be as good as uh, Nilocom. Nilocom is just way too OP when optimized correctly. If you have seen all of my post-release videos of Nilo, or if you've seen me on stream, right, you'll see I absolutely obliterate everything. Nilo, Nilocom absolutely obliterates everything. So it was Nilo damage was to be by higher because of a static dendro cost explosion in Nilocom versus like wasted dendro cost due to enemy reaction limit on Kave cons without Nilo. It's very obvious, right? Because he only activates it every few seconds, and by then you have you may you probably have more than two bloom calls being generated. So it's a waste. And then you have Nilo's very strong buffs so like the burst the dendro core damage 400 percent versus 46.7 55 percent. And can tell you that that damage buff, right? That buff to the core damage is actually very important for rupture, which is the dendro core explosion, to outperform hyper bloom or virgin. Because hyper bloom and virgin in the first place have higher reaction multipliers. If you don't have a high damage buff like what Nilo provides, 
it's actually very hard for them to outperform hyperbola budget, especially as your EM rises. Because that base reaction multiplier also affects the base amount. Okay? Which gets skewed with EM. So it kind of feels bad that way. Uh, if you want to know more about how, how this entire thing works, right, the scaling, etc., how much HP, how much EM, and you know, different trial thresholds, right, check out my Nilo math guide where I really come up, cover in great detail on her uh, passive with regards to the multiple core, this, this 400% thingy, along with uh, varying levels of EM on the team. Okay, so using Kave as a dendro driver in other dendro related comps like Hyperbloom or Virgin is okay that's to good aoe in fact i can say that it's good as well because it's just just how good his aoe is but it's not very optimal in terms of utilizing his cape because you're just utilizing his dendro application oh and maybe the heals from a1 passive yeah in fact i think that he may end up bursting some calls before you get to trigger your hyperbrain version uh, you might actually lose out on some of your hyperbrain version and become a uh, dendro course instead I think it's likely to happen, <laughs> but it's definitely feasible. And like, if you have, you have been looking for like a dendro driver with good AOE, right? Then he is going to give you a very good feeling when you're using. And if Hyperboom or Virgin is your go-to option, your favorite comp, by all means go for him. Then use him as a dendro call at uh dendro driver at C zero. It should be enjoyable, gameplay wise. So, I'll conclude that Kave is a budget Nilo. That's better used with Nilo because even though his kit kind of wants him to trigger blooms, right? Hydro trigger comps are still better. In both consistency of triggers and total number of triggers or calls. Yeah, I should just say triggers. Total number of calls being generated because one hydro trigger uh, is like half of your dendro. Uh, okay, technically speaking, trigger and calls are the same, sorry. Now, while Kaveh may seem like him can get more triggers in 1D3H due to his low application rate, you know, because low application rate, there's lesser chance of uh, the dendro becoming the aura, which is why we say this. But at the same time, lower application rate also means lesser total cost, which also affects your total damage. So like I said, his, his kit is a little in an awkward scenario because bloom comps, pure bloom comps, typically one to do hydro triggers but yet he's a dendro character and his kid is trying to make him be the dendro trigger so yeah all of us should have added em skilling to his talent damage if you really wanted really wanted Kabe to be better this is a flexibility in terms of him being in a bloom comb with hydro triggers it's a little unfortunate i would love for him to get some em skilling but you know it's already the end of his beta has long ended <laughs> So there's no hope of this. Yeah, so new TLD them TLDR because 4, 5, 6 is pretty much a TLDR. Okay, if you want a TLDR, start from 4 through 5 and 6. Yep. So, Kaveh video series, we finished the first uh, detail key analysis and then you have the Kaveh comms. I will, cover, I will cover Bloom 2D2H next because, you know, like I said, that's the most ideal. Uh, if there are more comments wanting to look into the on 1D3H, maybe I'll cover 1D3H as well. Um, do I really need to cover Virgin or Hyper Bloom Cops? In terms of math wise, not really, like, because the damage comes from the Hyper Bloom or the, 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 the Electro or the Pyro Trigger. Him in Hyper Bloom or Virgin is really his AoE, which you don't need me to go do math to, to show you, right? The, the AoE itself is more like thing. UAL or efficiency. So maybe after this comp, we will move on to artifact comparison and weapon comparison. But let me know in the comments how it goes, uh, especially uh, both for this Math Guide 1 and Math Guide 2. So, anyway, thanks everyone for watching. I actually wanted this video to be shorter, but I guess I always just have more to share. <laughs> so, if you like the content in my video, increase subscribe for more. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye.